Good morning, Bucknutters. Welcome to the Bucknuts Morning 5 here on Monday, May 2nd, 2022. I am Dave Biddle flying solo on today's show. A tremendous amount to get into. I mean, let's start with uh, the Dean crystal balling John Walker to Ohio State. John Walker is a high four-star defensive tackle in the 2023 class out of Florida. The Buckeyes continue to crush it in the state of Florida with their 2023 recruiting class. They've always recruited Florida well. They're taking it to a new level this year, and what a great state to uh, you know put a lot of eggs uh, in your basket from. I mean, this is uh, going to be a tremendous 2023 class for Ohio State. John Walker, one of the top defensive tackles in the country. Um, he is the number 14 D tackle and the number 118 player overall. So he got 14 defensive tackles ranked within the top 118 players in the country. A young man out of Kissimmee, Florida. Right there by Disney World. Uh, you know, I think if anybody's been down to Disney World, the first time you think of, oh, it's called uh, Kissimmee. Uh, no, Kissimmee, Florida. So John Walker. And I tell you what, guys, as you know, if you know anything about Bill Curlick, if he puts a crystal ball into the Buckeyes, you can lock that down. So um, great stuff there. So, um, again, it's not – he hasn't committed yet, but when Bill Curlick puts a crystal ball in, it's pretty close to a lock, if not a lock. So – Great news there for the Buckeyes. They're going to add to their 2023 class, it looks like, with defensive tackle John Walker. Um, and another interesting note from this weekend is kicker Parker Lewis is transferring from USC to Ohio State. He'll have three years of eligibility remaining. Had a really good year at USC last year. Um, and he's got a booming leg. He's a guy that kicks it out of the end zone on kickoffs. Um, and, you know, he can make field goals from 55 yards. Now, the interesting thing is, you know, he's coming in on scholarship. Right now on the official roster, the Buckeyes have two scholarship kickers. So that would make three. We all know they're not going to have three scholarship kickers on the roster. So that means either Noah Ruggles or Jake Seibert will be leaving. Um, we'll see which one. Um, I hope Ruggles comes back. Nothing against Seibert. I think that'd be perfect for Ohio State to have Ruggles come back for one more year. Um, and... You know, he was so accurate last year, only missed one field goal, was perfect, 70, 74 of 74 on extra points, the most accurate season by an Ohio State kicker ever. I won't call it the best. I think Mike Nugent's uh, you know, 2002 season was the best. Um, he had That season was tremendous. Plus, Nugent could kick it from 55, 56 yards. Just ask Marshall, right, um, that, that game winner that he kicked in 2004 against Marshall. Sorry, Marshall fans, if any Marshall fans are tuning in. But um, so, yeah, so we'll see what happens. It's interesting to me that, that um, they now technically have three scholarship uh, kickers um, on the roster, if you include Parker Lewis on the roster. So um, and by the way, if those are wondering about scholarship count, you know, I put some on Twitter last night. You know, people, by the way, I want to I want to retweet the, the show right now. Um, some people were asking me on Twitter last night about, you know, I put a little, um, you know, promotion for the show up and ask for questions and. A lot of people were asking, where's Ohio State on the scholarship count? They're right at 85 right now, but that includes Parker Lewis and the other two kickers. So in my mind, they're basically one under right now. Not officially, but they're one under. That that makes me wonder if they're going to uh, land maybe an offensive lineman in the portal. Um, they'll at least look. Anybody who's watched the show recently knows we talked about that. You know, will, will they land an offensive lineman in the portal? I don't know. They'll definitely look. And it's not – like it was in 2019 where you could just guarantee a starting spot to somebody and Jonah Jackson came in, they really couldn't guarantee a starting spot to somebody. So it'd be more of a depth guy or maybe a guy that has multiple years left where you could say, listen, you'll be our main backup. We'll make sure we play you. And then next year, you know, you'll be a starter. We'll see. Um, they'll at least look Ryan day and uh, you know, Mark Pantone will leave no stone on turn there. So uh, let's get in some other things here. Um, huh. Yeah, another thing that we talked about on uh, Twitter last night, you know, someone asked, uh, should the horseshoe be removed? You know, because it's, you know, it's 100 years old now. And I, you know, I called blasphemy on that. I said, sir, you are banned. Um, you know, I get it. I mean, I don't, I don't get it. I love it. It's my, I think it's the best stadium, you know, in college football, the best. I just love it. The Rotunda. I mean, it just looks like you know, the architecture looks like something out of like ancient Rome. It's just beautiful. Um, I get it, though. You know, the the bleacher, you know, style seating, you know, unless you sit in the in the really, really nice seats is, is not conducive. Um, the booty doesn't feel really good after sitting uh, that, that long on those bleacher seats. And 
Now, you should be standing up, right? But I know then people are going to be like down in front and all that. And anyway, you should be able to stand up at an Ohio State football game, but I digress. Here's what needs to happen, though. Eventually, it will and should be renovated. I have no doubt they'll renovate it, and they've renovated it before. We know the major renovations that happened right around the turn of the century where they added seats, lowered the field. You know, I thought that they did a great job with that. They maintained the architectural integrity of, you know, the outside of the stadium um, while renovating it. And I think they'll renovate it again. There's no way they're going to, like, get rid of Ohio Stadium. Like, no way. No way. And – if I'm wrong about that, I'm wrong, but I better not be because that that place is a cathedral. And they they better never get rid of it. But I, you know, people were wondering, you know, what needs to be done. I think renovating it needs to be done. Renovating it needs to be done. All right, one more, and then we'll get to some questions. All right, this comes from my guy Trey Scott, my colleague on Twenty Four Seven Sports. Um, I thought this was a good question that he asked me on Twitter um, when I asked for questions for the show. Um, CJ Stroud has been kind of an underdog throughout his career. For those who don't know, I mean, he was a three-star recruit at one point only started two years at quarterback in high school. Um, I, I wish I could say that, that, you know, I, I didn't even play high school football. I played in junior high. I played basketball and baseball in high school. I wish I could say I was only a two-year starter at, at quarterback in high school. That'd be pretty cool anyway. Um, but CJ Stroud was a three-year or a three-star prospect. Um, and then started to get, you know, had a really good junior year as a, his first year as a starter. So then was kind of getting some buzz and then really looked good on the, you know, the camp circuit um, and the combine circuit and everything that summer. And really then is, you know, it was a four star and then really blew up, had an unbelievable season playing against top competition there, Rancho Cucamonga in California and, and blew up uh, and was a, depending on what service you look at, uh, was a five-star prospect. I think by the, you know, I don't think, I know by the 24-7 sports composite, he was a very, very, very high four-star, as high of a four-star as you could get. Um, you know, but um, depending on what service you look at, he was a five-star. doesn't matter. It's splitting hairs. The point is, he was kind of always an underdog. And then he came to Ohio State and, you know, red-shirted, even though he played a little bit. People are wondering, is it going to be Jack Miller or C.J. Stroud? Although I always told you guys it was going to be C.J. Stroud. Um, <laughs> I had to throw that in there, didn't I? Um, but people were wondering, is, is Jack Miller going to be the guy? Is C.J. Stroud going to be the guy? And then even after C.J. Stroud wins the job his second year, you know, after the Minnesota game, people are wondering, oh, man, is he the guy after the Oregon game? Oh, man, I don't know about this Stroud guy. And then he, you know, has the shoulder injury, sits out a game, and people are still wondering, what about this C.J. Stroud guy? Then he becomes – a Heisman finalist and just, just completely had a fantastic year. And um, now is the favorite to win the Heisman and to be the number one pick in the 2023 draft. How will CJ Stroud deal with these expectations after being a underdog for most of his career? It's a good question. The good thing if you're a Buckeye fan is CJ Stroud is grounded as you could be. He's, he's humble and it's real. Like it's not like fake humility. You know, he, he's a, he's salt of the earth type of kid, you know, and um, I think he's going to handle it. Well, you know, we'll see. I think he's going to handle it. Well, all right, let's get to some comments and questions here. Um, let's go here. Um, let's go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, all right. We'll start with that. Oh, got an IO. All right. Ed wants to know, well, says those short kickoffs were a problem. Yeah. A lot of thing. Um, a lot of that, though, is Urban, when he came to Ohio State, wanted the kickoffs to be short. They had kickers that could kick, you know, touchbacks pretty much when they wanted. Um, Ruggles was not that guy, um, but whatever. He was so good on field goals and extra points. We'll, we'll let that slide for sure. Um, that was Urban's strategy. Now, things have changed now where you can just fair catch it. I, I don't like that rule. I, I get it for safety. I still don't like it. I hate seeing somebody fair catch a kickoff, and then you get the ball at the 25. I feel like if you're going to do that, you should get the ball at the 20, which used to be where you would get the ball for years in football. You'd get the ball, you know, a touchback would be the 20. And then they decided to make it the 25. Um, like the rules aren't, aren't already set up for the offense anyway. Like they had to like then make touch, touchbacks to get the ball at the 25. Didn't get that, but whatever. Um, I, I hate when you can call a fair catch uh, like the five-yard line and get the ball at the 25 on a kickoff. It's so stupid to me. But it's reality. But when Urban first got here in 2020 in 2012, that wasn't the rule yet. You could pin him, make him catch the ball like at the two yard line and then get him at the 15 and bam. And then, you know, bring the silver bullets in then in there and good luck. You already got him pinned deep. Um, 
Now it's not as much of an issue because they can just call a fair catch. So you want somebody that can boom it through the end zone. Just give them the ball to 25. Don't risk, um, you know, going out of bounds or, you know, them having a long kickoff return when they could just call a fair catch anyway. So now if you're playing a team that is known for never, you know, doing a touchback, never calling for a fair catch, they're always being aggressive. That could be a different story. You're still going to pin them. But I like the idea of having um, that guy who can uh, just boom it through the end zone. So, so there you go. Um, and yeah, we've had some people wondering, you know, are we at 85 with Lewis? Yeah, I touched on this earlier. Sorry, I'm just now getting into the comments and questions. Um, yeah, they're at exactly 85 scholarships now with Parker Lewis. But here's the thing. Um, they have three scholarship kickers, including him. So de facto, in my book, they're at 84 because they're not going to have three scholarship kickers. We'll see which ones they uh, – which one of the kickers leaves. It's got to be either Ruggles or Seibert. I mean, it's just, you know, common sense that one of those guys is going to be leaving – all right, uh, Duncan wants to know, other than uh, the offensive line, what other positions would they look at in the portal? Um, they like their six corners, but they only have six scholarship corners. They like them all. You know, starters coming back with Denzel Burke and Cam Brown. They love Jordan Hancock as that number three corner. They like J.K. Johnson a lot. He'll be that number four corner. Um, they like the two true freshmen who enrolled early, Jair Brown and Ryan Turner. But that's it. They got six scholarship uh, corners. You know, they got Cameron Little, who as a walk-on looks pretty good. And they've got some other walk-ons. But um, I could see them, to answer your question, I could see them, you know, other than the offensive line, which they'll look at, I could see them at least looking at a defensive back, um, particularly a corner, maybe a safety. Although I think they're – I like their safeties. I think they're good at safety, especially if they get Jansen Dunn and Lanson, Lathan Ransom back. That would give them seven, eight safeties that I like. So I think the top six is set at safety. You look at boundary, you got Josh Proctor and Court Williams. And then at, uh, you know, adjuster, um, free safety, you got uh, Ronnie Hickman and you got Kai Stokes. And then, you know, slot safety, you got uh, Cam McAllister and, uh, and is it Cam McAllister? Do I have his name? <laughs> Ryan McAllister? I'm sorry, I'm getting names mixed up already. You got McAllister at safety, and you got Cam, Mar Cam Martinez. Yeah, Cam Martinez at uh, safety. So you got McAllister and Martinez at the slot. And then if they get, you know, Lathan Ransom and uh, Jansen Dunn back, that's eight safeties that I like. They got Jalen Johnson there. That's nine. So I don't think they'll look for a safety. I could see them looking for a corner. I could see them looking at a corner. Um, Another comment here about the offensive line. This comes from Nick. If they can get an offensive guy, a line, if they can get an O-line guy with three years left and then go from there with development. Yeah, exactly, Nick. That That's what I said earlier, you know, and I think that might be the best case. It's not going to be like a fifth-year senior uh, like a Jonah Jackson in 2019. I think that would be best case scenario. Get a guy that, that you can bring in and uh, a guy that you can tell, hey, we'll get you in the game. You'll play this year and then – Next year, and then the following year, you're going to be in line to be a starter. And maybe that'll be enticing to somebody. Um, so, uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. I think, especially with NIL, you know, the foundation can get involved with transfers like they did with uh, Tanner Holden. I wonder if they did the same thing with Parker Lewis. I don't have firsthand knowledge of that. I do have firsthand knowledge of the Tanner Holden situation with basketball um, where, uh, you know, they uh, – brought in Tanner Holden and they helped with him by the way I do remember now McAllister's first name Tanner I, re I remember now because I'm talking about Tanner Holden sorry uh Tanner McAllister completely forgot your first name there at least I remembered your last name after calling you Cam McAllister and then I believe Ryan McAllister he is Tanner McAllister he's from Oklahoma State he's your starting slot safety and I should probably know his name this is why I shouldn't be doing this all off the top of my head I should probably have the roster in front of me um I do jot I do jot down some notes not all off the top of my head, but basically, um, yeah, I, you know, it was an awesome draft, um, you know, but the thing is though, here's the thing though, but, um, I don't know. I mean, the, the, the Haskell Garrett situation to me is so odd I and mean, I'm happy. I'm so happy. The Buckeyes had two first round receivers and they cement themselves as wide receiver you, but other guys slipped. I mean, they are Mumford to the seventh round. Um, he was projected as a fourth rounder, maybe a fifth rounder at worst. I saw some even had him slipping into the you know third round, um, late third round compensatory. That's where Dane Brugler had him, um, and some others. 
So Thayer Munford, seventh round. Didn't like to see that. Um, feel bad for him. And then Haskell Garrett, man, there must be something up with that. I don't know what's going on with that. Um, you know, now I never bought coming into the year. You know, there were people projecting him as a first rounder. Forget about that. But even leading into the draft, I mean, people were saying fourth, fifth, sixth at the worst, and then he goes undrafted. You know, I don't know. Something happened there. I, I have no idea. I have no idea. Um, why do y'all – here's a here's a comment or a question from Shane. Why do y'all love Ewers so much? Um, I don't think people love him. I, I don't know what you're talking about there, Shane. Maybe uh, maybe Texas fans love him. And, you know, I'll tell you one thing about, about Ewers that I – I find if you're a Texas fan, you should like this. I thought maybe there, you know, I never heard anything, but I thought maybe, you know, there was uh, the, the other Ohio State quarterbacks probably didn't like him, if I had to guess. Here comes this kid, comes in with this NIL deal, should still be in high school. Like, what's this kid doing here? But they all like him. Like, they still, like, keep in touch with him. Talking to some of the guys, like, um, you know, Kyle McCord. We talked to Kyle McCord during spring ball, and, uh, you know, Kyle McCord was saying that he still texts – Quinn Ewers and you know, CJ Stroud still cool with them. And, you know, all the guys still like him. So that says a lot about him. I think, you know, he's not like some punk coming in here. Like I think maybe he got the reputation. So, um, but I wouldn't say Buckeye fans love him. I, I think Buckeye fans were more than fine with the situation. You got CJ Stroud for another year. You got Kyle McCord on the come up and young Devin Brown's looking really good. Looking really good. I have a feeling Devin Brown might be the future starter after Stroud we'll see and I really like Kyle McCord too so good problem to have it's almost like this Ryan Day guy can recruit quarterbacks and evaluate them very well um did Thayer deserve to start last year yes I think he deserved to start last year I don't know if putting him at guard was a good idea but you know he was that was his fourth year as a starter he graded out really high as a tackle by PFF in previous seasons fifth year starter or a fifth year senior yeah he deserved to start um, Tyreek Smith in the fifth round. That was a good pick. Yeah, I thought that was um, good and good for him too. This is coming from Geo Dit 42. I thought uh, Tyreek might be, I projected him as a sixth rounder when I did my uh, little projections, uh, my predictions. But um, yeah, we'll see. Um, and yeah, and he uh, he didn't go to the Titans. Yeah, as you mentioned, you corrected yourself. He went to the Seahawks, went to the Seahawks. So So good for him. Yeah, Nicholas Petit Ferrer was the one drafted by the Titans. Good for him. I thought that was – man, Titans had a pretty good draft there, you know, getting um, Malik Willis that late. Um, and then NPF in the third round. I thought NPF would be a solid late second-round pick, early third. So, uh, so yeah. Um, so, there you go. Geo did also wants to know, do you see Master Teague making the Bears roster – I don't know. I hope so. You know, at the very least, he'll he'll be a practice squad guy. And for those that don't know, I mean, practice squad guys, they're taken care of now in the NFL. It didn't always used to be this way. They make, um, you know, just over $100,000, um, which think about it. And that's for, you know, just for the season. <laughs> you know, that's, you know, which is like half the year. But still, I mean, they're making $100,000 with benefits, medical benefits, everything, full benefits, or making over – hundred thousand dollars to be on the practice squad and then if you get called up you're making that uh that nfl paycheck so we'll see i don't know if i'd project him to make the the bears roster but i think he has a chance i think he has a chance yeah we got duncan saying that court williams is a beast yeah and they really like court williams i mean josh proctor is going to be the starter but they like court a lot because um you know ryan day even said he's one of the hardest workers on the team if not the hardest worker you got 105 guys on there um, and they're saying he's the hardest worker. So you got to like that. Um, uh, let's see. Let's see. <laughs> Yakov 22. I love it. My man's always clowning me about the Reds, which clown me all you want. I, I mean, they're, they're, they're <laughs> the Reds are just, they're clowns. So you can clown me all you want. I don't even care. I mean, whatever. As I say on my Twitter profile, I'm a Bengals fan and Red sufferer. It used to be both Bengals slash Red Suffer. Now I go by Bengals fan Red Suffer. And Yakov wants to know, Dave, will you buy a Dax Hill Bengals jersey? No, I will not. No. And by the way, I've warmed up to the pick. Um, first of all, I'm not a jersey guy. Um, not not talking about the state. I don't buy jerseys. Now, if I was going to buy a Bengals jersey, I'm sure you guys can imagine who it would be. It would be Joe Burr, Joe Shiesty. I don't, I, I'm not a, a, a jersey guy. I, I, I don't I, 
never have been, never will. I don't get jerseys. And a lot, a lot of you like getting jerseys. I'm not, I'm not judging you. Don't judge me. Um, so I'm just not a, I just don't buy jerseys. That's not my style. Um, I'll rock my team's gear, but I just, not the jersey though. I always thought it was weird, a man wearing another man's jersey. It's just me. It's just me. It's just me. I know I'm in the minority there. I know I'm in the minority. Um, Bengals did okay, Jason says, in the draft. I mean, see y'all again in the playoffs. That's right. That's right. And people say, well, the Bengals didn't really address their offensive line that much in the, in the draft. That's because they addressed it in spades and free agency. Right? Lyle Collins, Alex Kappa, Karras. I, I, would, I wanted them to get Linderbaum, but he wasn't there. The stupid Ravens always draft so well, and they got Linderbaum. Um. In next year's draft, will JSN be drafted higher than Chris and Garrett were? If you look at the mock drafts right now, he will be. I mean, I, first of all, I think the Falcons messed up by not taking Garrett Wilson, taking Drake London at eight, um, but whatever. Drake London is a fantastic prospect too, but I thought Garrett Wilson should be the number one receiver in this draft. I thought Chris Olave is the safest pick in the entire draft. Um, they went 10 and 11. If you look at the mock drafts, a lot of, a lot of them have JSN going sixth. CJ Stroud one, JSN sixth. So I'll say yes. Um, crazy wide receiver, you man, wide receiver, you. Oh, I love you too, Yakov. He says, I, <laughs> I love you, Dave. Enjoy the interaction. Yeah, you can. Yeah, man, you can keep. Uh, you can keep clowning me, man. You can keep clowning me. It's it's all good. Um, Duncan is a hat guy. I'm somewhat of a hat guy. I don't have my Bengals hat right here. I do have a Blocko Ohio State hat over here. Can't really reach that either. Yeah, I don't. I'm not a huge hat guy, but I'm, 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 I consider myself a hat guy. Yeah. And I bend the bill, you know, like back in the baseball days, you got to bend the bill. I don't like the flat bill. Get off my lawn now. And I, it's just, I don't like the look. It's not get off my lawn. I just don't like the look. Bexley says, Hey Dave, shout out from Southeast Asia. Go bucks. I love it. Southeast Asia. You can be more specific. Southeast Asia is a big place. Where, where in Southeast Asia? Now I want to know where in South, I'm a, I love my main hobbies are, I mean, my job is sports and my main hobbies are sports, <laughs> watching sports. And I play tennis, used to be an athlete. I guess I still kind of am, kind of. If you consider playing old man doubles tennis uh, an athlete, okay, I'm not an athlete. Um, sports, hobby is my main hobby and, and music. I love music, but I also like geography. I've always loved geography. I got maps up all around here, world maps. Map of the state of Ohio, map of the United States. So now I want to know where. Um, now I want to know where in Southeast Asia. When my back is feeling okay, can I dunk a tennis ball? I can dunk a tennis ball. And twice in my life, I dunked a regular basketball on a 10-foot rim. Not in a game, both times in practice. And not going like live in practice, like, you know, layup line one time. And another time in practice where we were just trying to dunk and I missed, like, couldn't do it like 10 times and finally got one in. So, yeah, I can – I'm 6'3". I can still dunk a tennis ball. There's no way I could dunk a basketball. No way. But I did twice as a senior in high school. So, still proud about that. It's because I have long arms. I didn't – I couldn't jump that high. I just had – I'm 6'3 and I have long arms. Um, okay, here we go. Looking back. On how many people were drafted from that team? Do you think the 2019 could have beat LSU had we beaten Clemson? This is coming from Sue on on uh, YouTube. Um, it's interesting, Sue. Clearly, in my opinion, Ohio State and LSU were the two best teams in 2019. I still think Ohio State got screwed in that game against Clemson. I'll go to my grave believing that was complete nonsense. The replay official was either incompetent at the very least or – Donaghy at the very worst. I'll leave it at that. I mean, just things happened in that game that were inexcusable. That fumble that was returned for a touchdown that was called a fumble on the field was clearly a fumble. Justin Ross caught the ball, took three steps, then it was stripped from him, then it was thrown for a fumble, and it was called one on the field. Then they were they reversed that. It'd be one thing if it was called like um incomplete on the field, it still would have been ridiculous. And, and they they kept it. The call in the field. The call in the field was right, and they, and that was only that was only one thing that was weird that happened that game. So I think Ohio State should have played LSU in the national championship game. Here's the thing: J.K. Dobbins would not have been able to play in that game. 
he got hurt against Clemson and got hurt bad. I mean, he tried to gut it out out there on one leg. I mean, he, he there, I don't think even 10 days later he would have been able to play. And if he played, he would not have been effective. They would have Master Teague as the starting running back. And as great as Ohio State 2019 was, and I don't say this lightly because I've covered two national championship teams. And I go back, you know, even before that as a fan, there's some great Ohio State teams that were near misses, um, you know, like 95, 96, 98. that were great teams. 2019 Ohio State might be the best Ohio State team I've ever seen. That's how great they were. But without J.K. Dobbins and that LSU team was stacked, I don't know. I just think LSU would have beat them. Because I think at full speed, that, that would have been a real good game. You, Man, you take – but you take um, J.K. Dobbins off for Ohio State. I think that would have tilted it in LSU's favor. It would have been a hell of a game. I bet you anything Ohio State would have given LSU a better game than uh, Clemson did. But – um well, he dropped one touchdown pass. J.K. dropped one touchdown pass in the Clemson game. The second one he didn't drop, he laid out. <laughs> you know, he's a 5'8 running back laying out completely in the end zone and caught it and then the ground, you know, caused it to bounce up a little bit. I still think that could have been called a touchdown. You can't call that a drop in my book, in my book. The other one was just terrible. Perfect play, swung it out to him and he dropped it. It happens. J.K. was a stud that year. Um only Ohio State running back to ever rush for 2,000 yards in a season. Pretty cool right there. I thought Zeke's uh, record – I thought Eddie's record would last forever. Excuse me. Um, Zeke got pretty close. Um, but um, J.K. To JK topped it. Eddie had uh, 1,927 yards, his uh, Heisman winning season. It's easy to remember that. 1,900 and then the 27 because Eddie wore 27. And then J.K. had 2,002 yards. <laughs> Another one that's easy to remember, 2002, which was the exact same amount of yards that Jonathan Taylor had that year for Wisconsin. I always found that interesting. So, so there you go. Um, there you go. Oh, I like it. Be sure to smash the like button. That's right. That's exactly right. Um, all right, let me get to one more here. I don't know how many people care about the Bengals draft, but I'll answer one more here. What grade do I give the Bengals draft, even though they drafted a player from that team up north? I've warmed up to the Dax Hill pick. I think they're going to be creative with him. He was the best player on the board. The guys that I wanted really bad there were our, had already been drafted. Linderbaum, um, the D-tackle, Wyatt from Georgia, a um, couple others that I thought might slip if things went crazy. Didn't happen. I think Dax Hill might have been the best player on the board. When it was on the clock, I actually thought uh, Booth from Clemson was the best player on the board. Turns out medicals didn't check out, so Andrew Booth, the corner, and then, you know, so I like the Dax Hill pick, actually. This is, as we are wont to do as sports fans, we talk ourselves into picks, don't we? Like, the first we don't like it, and they're like, eh, after the next day, like, oh, maybe I like it. Now, a couple of days later, three days later, I like it. They're going to be creative with him, and, you know, he's a fast, fast kid. You know, take the Michigan stuff out of the mix. He's also a leader, good kid, so I like the Dax Hill pick. I like the Cam Taylor Britt pick in the second round. I don't know if they needed to trade up for him. I think he still would have been there three picks later, but maybe they had intel that led them to believe that he wouldn't be. They really liked him. So I like I like the first two picks. I didn't like the third round pick at all. I hope I'm wrong. If there's any Florida Gator fans out there, tell me I'm wrong about Zach Carter and explain to me why the hell the Bengals, who needed a three-tech D tackle, take a tweener in Zach Carter there, who's not even a true three-tech. He's a five-tech basically, who can play three-tech when they need a backup from up behind B.J. Hill. And then the Browns, of course, take the guy that I wanted, Perry on Winfrey. Someone needs to explain to me why the Bengals didn't take Perry on Winfrey in the third round there. And they pass on him to take Zach Carter. And then the Browns, of course, get Perry on Winfrey in the fourth round. I don't get that at all. Maybe it was maybe Zach Taylor's big on leadership, culture, um, character. Maybe there was something there. That's the only thing that makes sense to me. I also thought they reached in the fourth round for the offensive lineman. I would have liked Kennard instead. Again, maybe it's a character issue. I, that's the only thing that makes sense. Kennard was ranked higher by everybody who does this for a living. Um, just like Kennard was ranked much higher than Zach Carter by everybody who does this for a living. So now you can make the argument that if those guys were really that good, they'd be working for NFL teams. I get it. People have said things like, Oh, remember how great Mike Mayock, everybody thought Mike Mayock was? And then he goes to the Raiders, was an absolute disaster as GM. That year they had three first-round picks. Those guys were all up for their fifth-round or fifth-year option. 
Raiders declined all three of them. <laughs> so Mike Mayock, um, I and I was one of them that said Mike Mayock was great at being a draft analyst, and then he goes and be a uh, goes and gets a GM job and was a disaster. So you never know. Maybe the Bengals know something we don't. Maybe it was character issues. I did like them getting that safety in the fifth round, Tyson Anderson. Um, I think he's going to be the eventual replacement for Vaughn Bell if they don't resign resign him. I thought the Browns had a really good draft again, even though they didn't have a first or second round pick. They just know what they're doing. And the Steelers and the Ravens, the Ravens especially, pick it falling into the lap of the Steelers. AFC North fans, can, can we petition? One, maybe we just have a lottery. One of us can like move to the AFC South. Can we do that? This is brutal, man. The AFC West and the AFC North are brutal. Um, all right, I've gone way too long here. Uh, I appreciate you guys. I'm sorry if I didn't get to all of your questions or comments. Try to get as many as I can. I was going to do about a 20-minute uh, show. Went about, you know, 11 minutes more than that. Nothing wrong with that. Love you guys for tuning in. Appreciate you so much. If you like the show, like, subscribe, give us a five-star review. That stuff really helps. We appreciate it. Thanks so much. I'm Dave Biddle, and uh, thanks again for tuning in. I hope all you guys have a great day.